welcome to NPTEL's course on communication skills. This is module number 7, lecture number 2 on group discussion. In the previous lecture on group discussion, we already discussed about why we should go for a group discussion, what is group discussion and if you remember and recall, I said that today in the job pool, today in the globalized scenario where MNCs are competing for getting the best talent from the country or whether it is for just going for higher education, group discussion has become a very mandatory tool in terms of eliminating as well as in terms of selecting good candidates. Eliminating poor candidates and selecting good candidates group discussion is used very effectively. Now, why group discussion? It is not just to eliminate a candidate, but also to identify certain significant personality traits which are required for the organization and it is very easy to use group discussion to identify these traits. On the top, we have leadership uh, skills as a very basic trait, which is something that they are trying to look for. And then we also talked about what is group discussion. Now, basically I tried to emphasize the point that group discussion is not a very structured activity in the sense we can uh, describe each and every component, rather it is an unstructured activity, the group is just thrown together and deliberately it is made unstructured, unstructured in comparison with rather a structured activity like debate for instance, where there is a moderator and then the speakers are structured, they are disciplined to speak and finish the topic within a stipulated period of time. GD is not uh, stipulated, structured in that sense. The overall time frame is given, but then there is nobody who is structuring it, but that is what actually the examiners are looking for. They are actually looking for somebody to emerge as a natural leader and they want this leader or leaders or potential leaders to take care of this unstructured activity and they want them to impose a structure. Now, once you understand that GD is basically to eliminate people and at the same time to identify some very important personality traits and then it is rather a chaotic environment, it is rather a disorderly situation where order is to be restored by the person who is likely to be selected as a leader, as a potential leader. Now, once we have understood this, in this lecture, we will try to understand some of the evaluation criteria by which the examiners or the employers will be actually assessing and selecting the candidates. Followed by that, I will also talk about how to ensure success in group discussions what are the do's and don'ts one should uh, keep in mind and we will also try to conclude the lecture by giving some practical hints, by giving some practical tips. Just to recapitulate what is GD and then if you ask me to just summarize GD in two words, I would like to say that GD is all about coordination and cooperation. It is all about coordination and cooperation. Now, what do we mean by coordination and cooperation? When I say coordination, there should be a coordinator basically and it implies leadership qualities. You cannot make people coordinate without a coordinator and once there is a leader, the leader will be able to coordinate the whole team to a cohering goal. In this case, the goal will be a decision making or arriving at a consensus at the end of the given topic. Now, leadership qualities are very much implied when we talk about coordination and this is on the top. Followed by this is management skills. So, how to make people coordinate with you? So, there is something in the person when the person says that makes everybody accept what he says. Maybe there is faith maybe there is trust in the person when the person gets up and introduces the topic and says that he will begin it and 
there is something in the people not to oppose him, maybe charisma, maybe a kind of uh, trust that he is able to build even from the beginning, whatever it is, it is calling for some management skills. Now, even if there is a conflict, even if the person is trying to initiate as a leader and then there are others who are opposing him, now how does he resolve this? That is again is calling for management skills. Management is again in a simple manner defined as the art of getting work done by others without making them feel the pain of it. Okay. They should be able to do that with joy, they should be able to make them feel as volunteers in participating in the activity, but at the same time the work is done just because somebody has managed that very well, somebody has coordinated that very well. Now, this also takes care of the aspect of planning. Now, when I say planning, it involves a time, it is the leader or the manager who is giving a time. Remember I said that GD is a unstructured activity and then it is this leader who is trying to give the time plan. As I said in the previous lecture, the leader will decide that let us say it is 30 minutes, we will take 3 rounds and then he decides roughly about 10 minutes for each and he decides what will happen in each of the rounds and then mostly he is trying to remind people to follow this time frame that he has given for others and a procedure, who will begin, who will end, how much time will be spent for the preliminary discussion, how much time can be spent for cross firing, overall general brainstorming kind of discussion and arriving at a consensus. Now, all the things are given by him in terms of time and procedure and last but not the least when we say coordination, the person is also trying to exhibit his ability to harmonize the group. He tries to show his conflict resolution skills. Imagine a situation where somebody gets up and says that I will be the first one to speak out on this topic. There is another person who gets up and says that you loud mouth, you stupid, you do not know what to talk on this, how will you uh, speak on this? The other person gets offended, he says that you are so rude, impolite, you do not know how to talk, you do not have manners, so I will not let you speak. Now, these two are quarreling just to begin the activity, just to identify who will speak first. Now, time is running out and the time is running out for all the participants. At this moment, the natural leader, the person who has coordination skills, the person who is able to resolve this conflict will get up, take the initiative and then will try to pacify both the parties. So, he may either suggest that friend since he got up, let him uh, start his viewpoint or he may try to convince the other person by saying that why do not you uh, allow the other person to speak first and then you can speak or he may be even able to impress on them that he can speak first and then he can allow the others to talk. Whatever happens, he is just putting an end to that quarrel and then initiating the discussion. So, this is conflict resolution skills, one example of it which is also letting the group to harmonize, go in a very harmonious manner. GD is not only coordination, the second part is cooperation. It is not that only leadership qualities will be checked in a group discussion, but also one's ability to work in a team. One cannot be a leader all the time, one has to be a follower also. Now, to be a follower or as the saying goes, you have to be a follower first before you become a leader. So, to be a follower, does the person has the prerequisite skills? Now, this will be checked under this cooperation abilities. Now, what is expected when we say cooperation? First, whether the person is able to work towards a shared aim. The shared aim here is to arrive at a consensus. In some of the group discussion, they may even give a problem and then they may ask the whole participants to come out with a solution within the stipulated time. Now, is it possible for this person to coordinate the whole team as well as to cooperate with them? Suddenly, somebody is taking a lead, this person's ego is not getting offended, he is 
following the person's ideas, is going with them, because together they are interested in arriving at the general consensus, the solution that is very much required for the GD. So, together they are working towards a shared aim. Now, somebody defined cooperation in a very simple, but very uh, revealing and funny manner. It was said that cooperation is nothing but doing the things that you hate to do, doing the things that you hate to do and doing that with a smile. Now, what does it mean? It means you do not feel like working with somebody. It so happens your rival, your worst enemy is part of the team or just because of uh, some prejudiced kind of thinking, just by looking at somebody's face, you start hating the person. You do not want to work with that person. You do not want to be part of the team with that person. Now, that is inside you. But that should not be reflected on the face, that should not be reflected on your argument. You have to be very impersonal and you should not show that embittered feeling that is seething within you. What should you do? If you are really going to cooperate, you should be able to do the things that you hate to do. You hate to work with the person, but you do it and not just doing it with a grudge, but doing it with a smile. So, you will find fine individuals with leadership qualities in group discussions, even when they are against some of the people, what they will do is when they get up, even when they know that they are rivals, they will say, uh, my friend has come out with a very good suggestion. Uh, friend, I would like to propose this idea. Now, inside they may treat them as enemies, but then it is the decorum of GD that you do not show any personal feelings or you do not let any personal enmity interfere in the general group decision making. So, if you are able to do that, so one can acknowledge that you have good ability to cooperate with the team and you have good uh, skills to be as one of the team members. Now, this is what is checked basically in a group discussion, your ability to coordinate as well as cooperate. And then, if you ask once again, why at all group discussions are being used apart from just selecting and eliminating candidates? Are there other reasons for using a group discussion? Are there some general purposes? Yes, of course. Now, generally when you use group discussion, it increases motivation and persistence in learning. Two heads are better if they are coming out with better ideas compared to a single one. Now, in organizational setups, if a single person is making a decision and that decision is likely to go wrong and cost millions for the organization, it is always worth that two, three people are involved in decision making. Now, apart from that, generally when a person is working alone and when a person is working in a group, the group is likely to motivate the person. Alone, the person may lack in motivation alone the person may feel that, okay, uh, I may do something else, but when he is in a group, there is this mild group pressure, which is making this person not get distracted and focused on the given task. So, it increases motivation and persistence in learning. So, there are no abrupt endings, there are no stoppages in between, people persist, they continue to learn in a group. Apart from that, what about the learning outcome? Generally, it improves the learning outcomes, which means the results are good when something is done in a group. It improves learning outcomes and because for the following reasons, the learners must articulate what they know and do not know. Now, generally when the individual is learning something on his or her own, what the individual will do is will think of only what the person knows. But in a group situation, what happens? The individual has also to talk about what he or she does not know. So, this is interesting because the group is compelling the person to know his or her limitations also. And then apart from knowing what the person does not know, it also makes one challenge, one's own assumptions. Like Yesterday, I gave the example in the previous lecture. 
I said that there may be a person who is a male chauvinist and then he may have the assumption that women should not be emancipated at all, but all the assumptions are getting challenged in the group discussion and if he is very adaptable, if he has flexible ideas, he will actually change his opinion. So, that challenging of one's own assumptions will happen only in group interaction. Apart from that, it also helps one connect and consolidate ideas. Now, there are like minded peoples and then people who disagree with one's ideas. So, it is easy for a person to connect, relate and then it is also easy for the person to consolidate his or her ideas based on other views that are coming in the group. Now, overall it also enhances communication skills. It is only when a person tries to communicate an idea, the person knows how effective the person is able to communicate that especially in a group. Let us say there are 10 people and he is one of the 10 he is getting up and trying to communicate an idea. In the group there are remaining 9 persons, have all the 9 persons understood what he is trying to tell or is it possible for only 2 or 3 persons because he is using a language that is understandable by only 2, 3 or he is very chaotic, very vague, it is not clear for others. Now, what happens in a group discussion? Once the person gets used to group discussion, the person automatically tries to hone his communication skills. He realizes that okay, alone, individually when I am reflecting on something, I am able to understand what I am trying to tell, but the way I am trying to put it across, people are not able to understand me. So, what should I do? So, probably I should use a simple language, probably I should give them some connecting points, probably I should use a thread kind of uh, connective link, so that they are able to understand what I am trying to put forward. So, he tries to enhance uh, his own communication skills while in the group situation and most important, more likely a person is to change one's values also. What do I mean by this? Like the previous example I gave, somebody who hates womankind is able to change the value, realizes that okay, women are really playing very significant roles in the country and they are to be respected for certain aspects of the social setup and then his value is changed. After the GD and before the GD, the person before the GD was different and the person after the GD is going with some value imbibed in his mind. And because of that, the person's behavior is changing after this. Now, once you understood that GD has also some basic purpose apart from just selecting or eliminating a candidate for uh, a job situation, let us try to know what are the basic components of a GD and how do these components are helpful in evaluating the candidate actually for a GD. What are the four basic components? The four basic components first on the top we have leadership, then knowledge, communication skills and personality manifestation. Now, when I say leadership, I mean so many leadership traits, but on the top I would put initiative, one's ability to start a discussion, motivate others along with that decision making, because if the leader is indecisive, then there will be problem. So, decision making, planning. So, the leader should be able to plan, should be able to execute the plan. The leader should also show that the leader has a vision for the whole team as a goal, which is cohering with the vision and the leader is able to take the whole team according to the vision that the leader has got in his mind. Followed by this is knowledge. Now, as the saying goes knowledge is power and there is no compromise for the subject knowledge that is very much required to create a good impression in GD. Now, the subject knowledge there is no substitute 
nobody can give that unless one has done well during schools, during colleges or even apart from the classroom situation, one should have spent enough time in libraries, one should have developed a general keenness, alertness towards current affairs and developed certain skills related to acquiring knowledge and has an aptitude to know, learn things related to current affairs and general alertness towards technical advancements. So, today if somebody is asking some simple questions related to internet, related to mobile and somebody says that I do not know uh, how to operate, I, I never send an email. Now, that will appear very ridiculous, the technical advancement that is taking place and the technical advancement that has enveloped us. If the person says that he is like an ostrich, he is totally ignorant about what is happening in the surroundings. So, the person ill fits a GD. So, knowledge, thorough subject knowledge combined with current affairs, technical and scientific advancements in the field. So, that is very important and there is no substitute to this. Nobody can give any compensation, nobody can change this. This is something the individual has to pay enough attention and develop throughout. Combined with this is the third important component that is communication skills. Now, the whole course is on communication skills and then we will be reiterating communication skills through various lectures and when we talk about communication skills in terms of group discussion, what I mean about communication skills or these aspects of communication skills particularly active listening. If you remember in the lecture on listening skills, we talked about active listening and passive listening. Now, an active listener is somebody who pays enough attention to what is happening, who concentrates, who thinks that whatever is happening should be recorded either in his mind or note should be taken and he takes notes so that it can be used at a later stage. A passive listener is a marginal listener, a superficial listener and is not interested in what is happening around. Although he may pretend, he may appear to show interest, he is not really interested in what is happening. Now, in GD, active listeners are really required. In most of the GDs, marks are even given for just listening skills. Now, when we say listening skills, they are just given even for a person who has not spoken much, but then who is showing keen alertness just by listening. One can understand whether the person is a good listener or not by the powerful interruptions, by just meaningful additions to some of the thoughts or even just by agreeing to somebody's views, one can understand that the person is able to follow what is happening. So, active listening is what we keep on the top when we talk about communication skills with relation to GD, followed by this is fluency. Now, again uh, misconceptions related to fluency should be cleared. When we say fluency, we do not mean speaking fast. Okay. Some people are under the impression that one should speak very fast and one should uh, try to speak as much as possible so quickly, so quick so that for the rest of the people it just sounds like a fast moving train and then they find that it means nothing. When we say fluency, what we actually mean is your ability to use the words appropriately without any difficulty or with less efforts and you are able to use minimum number of words in a very precise fashion and you are able to extract the maximum out of the ideas that you are going to convey and influence the people in a very effective manner. So, fluency does not mean speaking fast, but it means using less words, but using them effectively, using the most appropriate words, using at appropriate time and using it very effectively. So, that is fluency, not just uh, speaking fast. Clarity. Now, 
this also goes with fluency when a person thinks that he or she can speak very fast actually they do not think of clarity clarity does not come if the person is not making enough pauses if the person is not enunciating the words clearly properly clarity does not come even if the person does not have clear ideas in the mind so clarity is another integral part of communication skills in relation to gd followed by this is coherence is there an order in which the person is able to enumerate his ideas is there a proper planning is there a way the person is beginning is there a middle is there an end is the person is using a very good effective ending as the person planned that in his mind already a good beginning a very effective middle followed by a very impact oriented ending is it possible for the person to do all these things in the mind and then avoiding any kind of distractions so that calls for coherence the person is speaking only those aspect of the elements which are really relevant for the topic is not getting distracted diction followed by this what do i mean by diction simply speaking it's the right word in the right place and i would also say at the most appropriate time if one is able to use it so it again adds to the effectiveness of the person's communication ability enunciation it implies phonetic ability pronunciation accent modulation of tone so there are some words one needs to emphasize and speak with lot of uh, importance and there are some words one need not give lot of emphasis where one can slightly reduce one's uh, volume tone and then tonal variation so that the audience doesn't feel any monotony in the person's expression and overall effectiveness does the audience feel that when this person is speaking i am able to understand the ideas clearly and not only i am able to understand the ideas very clearly but also i feel that it's quite effective whatever the person is telling i feel it's very important very significant but whereas somebody else is telling to me i am not able to understand what the person says however simple the words are used by the person and i don't feel that those ideas are very significant so if the person is able to create this overall effectiveness again it calls for his communication skills and overall the examiners or the employers are also looking for personality manifestation as a basic component of a gd now what do we mean by personality manifestation while we talk about communication skills we talk about one set of skills related to communication when we talk about personality manifestation we talk about another set of skills which will come under soft skills once etiquette once mannerism once behavior how will a person present himself before others okay even it includes the body language the way the person has dressed the way the person has even chosen the color the way the person is using a particular kind of perfume the accessories which are used by the person the choice that the person is making and overall how the person is grooming himself how the person is conducting himself in public so that will come for personality manifestation with added traits such as the overall positive outlook neither in interview nor in gd the employers or the examiners would be interested in a person with negative outlook it's very imperative important to show that the person has a positive outlook and this is something that they see as a personality manifestation and overall looking for pleasing mannerism is there some kind of negative mannerism something that should be avoided so the person should definitely avoid overall personality manifestation is trying to project a personality that is strong powerful positive effective meaningful fruitful and interaction with this personality the rest of the people should feel they will be able to achieve their own goals with the help of this person so 
just to quickly recapitulate the basic components of a GD, leadership with initiative and decision making, planning and vision, knowledge, thorough subject knowledge with keenness and alertness to current affairs and general interest in technical and scientific advancements, communication skills, keeping active listening and then fluency, clarity, coherence, diction, enunciation, effectiveness, avoiding monotony, leaving a pleasing impression which again calls for the personality manifestation where leaving a kind of positive outlook and then taking the people with oneself with soft skills manifested, showing pleasing mannerisms, making people feel that the person is quite affable, quite friendly and then by look itself we could feel that the person is quite uh, positive, lot of radiation is just coming out from the person, but all this is towards the positive side. So, that energy, that vibrance, so that will all come under personality manifestation. Now, these basic components again are used for evaluating the students. So, what are the criteria which are there under evaluation? So, let us look at the evaluation criteria. So, if we put personality, knowledge, communication skills and leadership and generally if they are assessed for 100 marks, each one will be given about 25 marks. So, personality will get 25, knowledge 25, communication skills 25, leadership qualities 25. Now, in personality each one or each sub category will get 5 points. For instance, dress appearance. So, dressing professionally to the occasion, has the person done it or not? How does the person appear? Confident or lacking in confidence? So, that goes for 5 marks and then the temperament, tone and voice. The person is short tempered, the person is getting provoked easily, tone is easily acceptable voice is clear enough, is not mumbling and gesture and body language. How about the postures of the person? If the person is slouching or the shoulders not uh, straight enough and what about the body language? Is he somewhat looking withdrawn? Is the person not interested in participating in the discussion? The body language, the uh, words are conveying something that the person is really interested in the discussion, but the body language is defying what the person is trying to convey. So, this will again be noted. So, body language has to go with the verbal component of the communication and then mental state. Is the person mentally strong, mentally alert or is the person just mentally preoccupied with something, some other thoughts? and not actually interested in what is happening before this person. So, mental state and all these things together will also create an overall impression for which another 5 marks will be given. Just like the way personality is assessed for 25 marks, knowledge will be assessed for 25 marks. To begin with, the depth of knowledge, when somebody is speaking on something, uh, let us say something like TV. Boone or Bain. So, anybody can speak on this topic, but then the depth will be assessed by the kind of factual details, by the kind of critical argument the person has developed, the kind of surveying ability that the person is able to talk, the number of TVs that are there in the country, the number of TVs that have come just in the last 10 years, last one year, how many users have come, what has contributed to this growth and so on. So, that depth of knowledge will just gain 5 marks and then range. So, some people will say that if it is related to engineering topics, I can talk. There is somebody else who says that I can talk about anything related to fine arts. There is yet a, another person says anything on literature I can talk, but I cannot talk anything about scientific advancement and all that. Now, range means one's ability to cover a wide range of topics. One is not only focused on one's own discipline, but is able to say something meaningful about so many other areas that is overlapping his or her own discipline. 
logical thinking? Is the person able to think logically while enumerating the knowledge component? And then how are the ideas presented? Are they organized? So, organization of ideas again will get 5 points and overall impression 5 more points. Communication skills again 25 marks, active listening I already explained about active listening as against passive listening which gets 5 points, fluency not talking fast, but making one thoughts very clear in terms of expressing with felicity, diction right word in the right place and appropriate usage of uh, language, enunciation phonetic ability speaking clearly again it gets 5 points, overall impression again gets 5 more points. Now, under leadership which is again for 25 marks, initiative ability to start something, begin something, most of us have actually starting trouble. So, is it this person who is able to start it? He is not just starting, but he is also motivating others to start it. Then team spirit, he is not just a leader, but also wants to be part of the whole team and make the team feel that is one among them, he is not a dominating domineering personality, not an egoistic one. Endurance, he is able to tolerate, he is able to withstand whatever pressures that are coming and then he is able to harmonize, show conflict resolution skills which will also get some points, 5 points. Last but not least decision making, some people would like to become leaders, but they are not able to make decision. Now, the quickness in which the person is able to decide and the ability to even decide as such will call for 5 points and the overall impression which are created again for 5 points. So, together if you combine all these ones, a candidate will be roughly assessed for about this 100 points. The points may vary, okay. somebody may assess this for 50 points, somebody may just go for 10 points, but overall if you look at it, these are the common evaluation criteria. So, once you have some idea about the evaluation criteria which are involved in selecting as well as eliminating candidates for a group discussion, you should also know some positive traits as well as some negative traits which are involved in the evaluation criteria. Let us look first at some positive traits which are involved in the evaluation criteria. Look at personality. What are the positive traits which are looked at when we talk about personality? Basically, first enthusiasm. Is the person is able to show some kind of cheerfulness, showing interest in the discussion, overall enthusiasm that is a positive trait, keenness and curiosity. So, as against indifference, the person is very interest, very much interested in knowing what other people are telling and not only in displaying his own knowledge. Participation instead of not sitting and observing what is happening, the person is participating, the person is contributing, the person is speaking, the person is expressing, the person is arguing, disagreeing, agreeing and so on. And cheerfulness just combined with enthusiasm, overall cheerfulness and overall smartness. The smartness can come because of communication skills, because of uh, uh, dressing, because of the overall personality manifestation, but generally in any manner smartness is something that is appreciated. In terms of knowledge, depth of knowledge is very much expected, thoroughness is also expected along with depth, the range, the wider ability to get access to various aspects of knowledge, so that is range followed by analytical ability combined with logical thinking that is a personal uh, good trait in terms of uh, knowledge, organization of ideas. So, is it a scattered brain or it is a brain that is able to organize the ideas and pick out the most relevant and the most important detail and put it very effectively. 
So, organization of ideas knowing what to be presented at the beginning, what should come in the middle and how some ideas should end followed by that coordination of thoughts. So, this also refers to coordinating one's ideas. One thought has been expressed at the beginning and then suddenly another thought is coming, it appears to be randomly different, but is it possible for the person to link it? The new radical idea is good sometimes even better than what is expressed, but then if you have that ability to coordinate these ideas, you will be able to create a feeling that your knowledge is quite range, it is wide and you are able to create a very effective impression. Under communication skills, clarity is seen as a positive trait, felicity of expression. Now, no shortcut methods can be used here. When I say felicity of expression, sometimes people see that even as a gift. Somebody has a kind of alacrity and openness towards new words, towards using words in a very poetic manner, in a subtle manner, in a nuanced style that does not come to everybody. And then how did this person develop? Maybe by intense reading, maybe by excessive exposure to people who are able to use words properly, listening to public speeches experiencing oneself either by attending GDs or by even watching so many GDs, the person has developed a felicity of expression. This is not just diction, but also to use words in a very beautiful manner. So, sometimes you listen to these people just for the way they are using the words, okay, you fall in love with the way these people are using words. Categorical conclusion an idea has been expressed, but there is no logical connection. But if the person is able to conclude it categorically, which means point A follows the general proposition that I gave and point B is the one that is logically following A. So, when this is done, I am giving example as point C, D and E. Point F is again re reiterating what I said in point A and then after that I am just concluding. Now, categorical conclusion, so one following the other and sort of incrementally going in terms of emphasis and then finally concluding with an effect. Followed by this coherence of ideas, general coherence instead of uh, scattering the thoughts, one is able to present it in a uh, coherent manner and overall effectiveness in terms of communication skills. In leadership again and again I am saying that initiative is something that is seen as a very positive trait, because many people do not take initiative. Team spirit, although one is an individual, one, when one is in a team, the person should be able to show some team spirit. Flexibility, ability to change according to the situation as and when needed conflict resolution skills, ability to solve some problem instead of being part of the problem and decision making. Many people are wavering in thoughts, they are not able to decide. So, decision making and overall patience, tolerance even towards ideas which appear to be very nonsensical and stupid. If the person is able to be patient and remain tolerant, that is also part of leadership qualities. Now, what are the negative traits? Now, again under the same basic components, we can also look at some negative traits, which you should definitely avoid. Now, under personality, introversion, what do we mean by introversion? Thinking about oneself, thinking within, not thinking out, not saying things aloud, keeping thoughts to oneself, introversion. An extrovert is somebody who comes out, discusses things openly. Now, being an introvert is not a problem. As psychologists would say, most of us are neither introverts who all the time think within, nor complete extroverts who all the time go on socializing, all the time are interested in being with other people and being in group. 
most of us are ambiverts. We enjoy being alone sometimes, we enjoy being in the company of so many other people at most of the other times. Now, being introvert as I said is not a problem as it is, but if you show that tendency when you are in a group, when you are expected to be an extrovert then it is a problem. So, your introversial qualities are good if you are writing a poem, if you are reflecting on an idea, if you are writing an article, if you are alone, if you are reading something and reflecting or you are watching a TV program and then reflecting on the ideas absolutely fine, but when you are in a group your extroversial skills are expected. So, there you should not show introversion. Combined with that the other negative trait is since you are thinking introvertedly, since you are thinking within you also tend to become sluggish in your thought, you also tend to speak slowly, you are not able to maintain a pace because first of all you are not interested in expressing your ideas, you want to keep the thoughts with yourself. Secondly, even when you express, you are not expressing with the required pace, you are quite slow. So, that should be avoided. Now, generally this may happen for another personality negative trait, it may happen because of the person is lacking in confidence, the person is diffident, the person may have some kind of negative thinking already, the person may think that oh somebody is from English medium that person's English is very good, oh that girl is appearing to be from a metropolitan city, so I am from a village, I am from Hindi medium, so my mother tongue is not English and then I have not read about this topic, so so many misapprehensions and so many thinking that is already reduce the confidence of the person, so lacking in confidence, it is again a negative quality, apprehensive apprehension is what? Thinking that somebody is already having a kind of upper hand and the person is already has accepted defeat and is thinking that somebody may attack, somebody may again catch this person unaware, thinking that the worst may happen and behaving in a manner that the worst is going to happen, so I should be always on the alert, apprehensive always afraid of something bad to happen and this will give also tenseness, anxiety. So, the person will be very tense, the person will not be relaxed in the group discussion, since the person is apprehensive of somebody attacking him or somebody putting him to shame. So, the person has that kind of fear, that kind of anxiety, so that is again making the person keep to himself and it also gives tenseness. Another negative trait which should be avoided at any cost in terms of personality manifestation is impoliteness combined by rudeness of behavior. In a group discussion, in any formal communication situation, the expected behavior should be polite, the words used should be parliamentary usage words only. What does it mean? There are certain words which could be accepted in the formal language communicative level, but there are certain words which are slang, which are colloquial, which are abusive words which cannot be used in a situation which is treated to be formal. Now, how do you identify that some words are treated to be abusive? Good dictionaries like the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. If you look at a particular word, it has a particular symbol to show you that it is an abusive word. So, which means do not use this in a formal context. There are dictionaries which will also tell you this is in formal usage, this is in informal usage. So, generally avoid informal language, generally avoid slang, colloquial use and try to be formal, not so formal that you look to be very serious and monotonous, but just formal suiting the occasion. So, this is against being impolite and rude, be polite, be pleasing. Other 
negative traits or combined with apathy. Apathy is no interest at all, indifference, showing that I am not interested in this topic. Then why did you come there first of all? So, I just want to sit there and see what is happening. So, apathy and unresponsiveness. So, just because the person is not interested, he is not responding. <coughs> Even if somebody is asking, so what do you think about this? The other person says, uh, no, never mind, uh, just pass the mic. Now, unresponsiveness or irresponsible behavior, not taking any responsibility. Would you like to speak first in the next turn? The person says, no, no, you can speak first. So, not owning that responsibility, not utilizing that chance and overall indicating a sense of boredom as if life is not worth living, this GD itself is useless. So, why am I here and then I am not interested in any of these activities. Then under knowledge, what are the negative traits? Now, lack of subject knowledge, I keep telling this that this no substitute for a thorough subject knowledge and nobody can compensate it uh, in any manner possible. Now, if somebody is ignorant, it is better not to show that ignorance and use some positive traits like openness of mind and get ideas from others and try to respond. Now, ignorance for example, a topic like euthanasia. Now, instead of immediately jumping into the conclusion, if the person does not know what the word means, thinking that euthanasia is sounding something like uh, Europe and Asia, it may be a trade link or some kind of political link between Europe and Asia and then the person starts talking about this, the people who are knowledgeable will start laughing at him, because they know very well that euthanasia is referring to mercy killing or intentional killing because of some kind of disease or a situation that is demanding that the person should be killed. So, how ignorance can cause damage to one's reputation? So, one has to be very careful. So, the best part is avoid being ignorant. So, ignorance should not be there and lack of subject, subject knowledge combined with that. Lack of meticulousness, lack of paying attention to detail. So, that again is not a good trait. Poor quality of mind, mental poverty, the mind itself does not have any ideas. Do you have something more to tell? No, no, I have nothing more. Can you illustrate this with an example? I have no idea about this. Okay. So, mental poverty, lack of creative ideas, same idea repeated again and again no fresh thoughts, no new thoughts germinating from the person. So, that is lack of creative ideas, lack of analytical thinking. So, no logical thinking, no analytical thinking. So, that is again a negative trait. Under communication skills, fumbling and muteness. Fumbling is not saying it clearly properly, but then saying something and stopping. Muteness is still worse, not saying anything at all just remaining speechless, just remaining devoiced, confused and unclear, lack of clarity, he is totally confused and whatever he is expressing is unclear in his thoughts. Then apart from this, the candidate has a tendency to meander, meandering is digressing. So, he is not able to rivet his attention to the original idea and focus to that but he keeps telling stories, he keeps giving illustrations which have no relation to the central thought. Incoherence followed by that and monotony. Monotony comes because if you are not able to vary your tone, if you are not able to give proper emphasis, then the speech itself becomes monotonous and it subsequently becomes boring. And under leadership, some of the negative traits, some people tend to become isolated like because of their introversial thinking perhaps or what they will do is they will insulate themselves. They will cover themselves with their own thoughts and ideas and they will not come out of it. They will also become unapproachable. 
not exhibiting friendliness. People feel somewhat that I cannot talk to this person, he is probably too egoistic or the person is also showing aggressive quality which is another negative trait. So, one should be assertive not aggressive, I will talk more about assertiveness and uh, not being aggressiveness soon. And then weak and wavering as against one's ability to make decision quickly and then one's overall temperament in terms of leadership. Some leaders are very patient and tolerant, some people are impatient, short tempered that is again treated as a negative trait. Now, having understood this positive traits and negative traits, now let us look at some of the success formula like what will make one get through in GDS successfully. So much so about the positive and negative traits which are uh, quite relevant under the basic components which are used for evaluation criteria in a group discussion. Now, with this I am concluding this lecture and in the next lecture I will try to give you some useful expressions if you really want to use some positive expressions and then avoid some negative expressions, what are the starters which you can use, okay. you can even memorize them and then use it. Apart from that, what will be some formula for ensuring success in a GD, this is also something we will be discussing in the following lecture. So, that will be the third lecture which is on group discussion. So, till we go for the third lecture, I will take leave of you, I will say bye and thank you so much for paying attention to this lecture, thank you.